Like. <laughs> Bad for yourself. <laughs> The northeast of Scotland is home to some very rural communities which have very little around them and are miles away from major cities. Rural touring involves performers making small scale theatre productions which tour non-traditional theatre spaces in isolated communities. This documentary is set out to answer the question, does rural performances bring communities together? This film will also provide you with an insight to what it is like to be a part of rural touring. We will help answer the question using four perspectives. Rural performers, North East Arts Touring Organisation, promoters and finally audience response. I didn't go to amateur drama in Aberdeen, which a lot of people did, because a lot of people I know um, went to Long Acre Players, Children's Theatre and everything. And I didn't get involved in that, mainly because my um, cousin moved to Bankshire when I was 13 and we were best pals and all my social life was there. So I didn't spend time in Aberdeen. But I was always very keen on drama. So my friend who was at Longacre Player said, why don't we apply for drama college? It'd be great fun. And I thought, oh my God, that would be amazing, amazing. And nobody in the family had ever done anything like that. I met Rona Munro and... Um, doing a play of hers when she was just a young playwright mm -hmm. and uh, we got together and thought we'd like to form our own company and do our own stuff, mm -hmm. do stuff about women. At that time that was in the 80s so we started in 1986 and formed our own company and worked as a duo. Because I remember at the time thinking, you know, I was in my 30s by then and I thought, you know, where is my career going and stuff like that. I, I'm not sure I ever thought that would be something that would last but, you know, we, we were at the right time, right time and right place. I've been touring um, Devised Physical Theatre, uh, which I also produce, uh, write, direct and perform uh, as Company Gavin Robertson since 1997. But before that, I started around 1985, uh, actually with my first ever grant, which was from the Scottish Arts Council. Um, I've done a lot of work too with the British Council, uh, which exists to take uh, culture, British English culture, to uh, foreign places and is part of the diplomatic corps. So we're very lucky in the UK, we have those uh, a facility to take us abroad to foreign countries. Um, and I generally, um, I don't call myself an actor, I call myself a performer, because actually you tend to wear uh, several different hats. I've got a green one on today, but normally, um, so you're either a writer, producer, director, uh, and with any one of those hats or a combination of such, that's how I tour my work, the work that I make. So I don't audition or work for anyone else. So I don't get funding from like Creative Scotland or anywhere. I mean, when I first started off and people said, oh, you must get funding to do this. And I started to fill in the forms and I thought, I'm going to spend most of my time trying to get funding when I could be working. I found a lot of people have spent a lot of time getting funding and then maybe doing one production and then having to start all over again. And then it's another year, maybe two years before they do another. And then a lot of people give up because that's just too much work. Times have changed now. There is less money for the arts. Uh, there's less money for companies who want to make work. There's less money for venues that want to uh, buy in or commission new work. So you have to be um, slightly inventive and a bit resolute about where you find your funding from. I now fund my work either with uh, venue partners, so either and probably more than one, so there might be two or three different venues, possibly in combination with a festival that commissions a piece of work. In the village hall, you know, you could be like on the flat or on all sorts of different platforms and, you know, you can see your audience a lot of the time because the lighting won't be as strong. You know, they've come in, they've just come sort of locally and then they're going to have often a raffle, you know, a cup of tea or a glass of wine or whatever. People can be more um, reserved because 
they do know each other and because they feel that they're very close, whereas in a theatre, you're completely anonymous, you know, you're, in, you're completely blacked out, big theatre, the audience is, is very much sort of set back from the stage mm -hmm. and the performers, whereas in a village hall, you can be very close to the performer. The reward for me, the difference that rural touring provides as opposed to a week or months long season in a rep theatre or in London is the connection with people. You completely connect with your audience and it's a real opportunity for them to come together. It's often been said to me um, that they're amazed that you have something of that quality that will come to a village, but um, I don't think they realise um, that that's our reward. You know, yes, we're paid to do it um, and it is labour intensive in terms of setting it up and putting the event on, but you really do get to talk to quite a lot of people during, before and especially after the performance and actually that's what you remember at the end. You don't remember how much you earned or where the cheque went. You remember the village of the people you met. Absolutely, performances bring communities together, yes, for sure. And it might be that you only speak to your neighbour for 10 minutes, you know, or you're sitting there to attend an event, but there might be an interval, there's a bar, people stay around afterwards, or they go from here to the pub, depending on which village you're in. So yes, without a doubt, I know it brings uh, communities together, for sure, yeah. NEAT, or North East Arts Touring, is an arts organisation based in the northeast of Scotland. NEAT's purpose is to promote uh, professional theatre performances and uh, cinema screenings in rural communities uh, in order to, to provide access to, to those rural communities that don't have other outlets, you know, they don't have a, a, a mainstream theatre or uh, cinema and a lot of the venues have poor transport links to, to major cities or towns. But it also has an extremely social value to it. Uh, it's an opportunity for rural communities to come together to, to enjoy some theatre or enjoy a film but also a, a chance to socialise because very often these days uh, there is no village pub, possibly the shop is shut, um, the small rural schools are closing so th there are not many places left in rural communities where people can come together and, and socialise and that really helps to reduce social uh, isolation. In my earlier career I was a performer and I toured a lot into rural communities and, and did small scale theatre productions in communities and it was something I really, really enjoyed. Um, it's what I call close combat because the audience are right, right in front of you. You're not in a, in a big theatre space where there's a a void between you and the audience and there's also a different relationship between the performer and uh, the audience they very often they chat and mingle with it, with each other at, at the end after the performance and it, it it's important to me to make sure that that carries on to happen um, and that small communities get access the high quality work. That's that's why it's important to me. I, I think it does work. Um, and since launching the the cinema scheme in 2012, um, our cinema audiences have really really grown. Uh, those events are really really popular. Um, we, we receive a lot of feedback from audiences and they really, really enjoy the events that, that we put on. And a comment that we often get is that, that the fact that they appreciate the opportunity to speak with performers after the show. So yes, I think our performances and screenings do work and I think they are really um, valued by the communities that we serve. Uh, 
I had a, a, a near death experience and my recovery was aided and abetted by my community. It was incredible. It, it, I mean, it, it actually taught me a life lesson in, in that, you know, you need people around you to support you. What uh, happened was I decided that I wanted to thank the community in some way. And I decided to embark on a project called A Portrait of Our Time. I also knew I had to get the project finished by uh, September when we were having a big exhibition. And I came across Neat. And that was my first production. It helped me out of a hole. And so I became a network promoter to promote that play 10 years ago. Well, at the time when I started, um, actually Annie Sturgeon, who was here earlier on, was doing the promoting stuff and she needed more help. So I was just a helper. So, um, and I was living closer to here than I currently am, but I like theatre. Um, and I used to come anyway to the theatre. So I just kind of thought, well, I come anyway, so I could be a helper. And then I kind of gradually increased my role with Annie and then she wanted to pull out completely. So it's me now. I wanted to become a promoter I, because I went to a talk given by uh, the then, um, uh, I suppose, executive manager of NEAT um, and he inspired us actually. There was a couple of us that thought, yes, that, that sounds good having theatre shows in, in the hall. So ordinarily, I would uh, I would get a pack in early on of uh, the shows that were touring in the for, for the, the season ahead. This is a bit like fashion; you're always working to the next season. We choose them while looking at the whole calendar, so obviously it's got to work with the dates. It's got to be a good day of the week. I do sometimes mention it to other people and say, "Do you think this would be all right?" Um, but the the shows of choose are my choosing, really. I generally tend to select five or six shows. I liaise with NEAT. They then tell us who's touring. Uh, if it fits in with our dates, I liaise with the hall keeper to see if the hall's still available. Then NEAT will come back and say that, you know, you're having this and you're having this on these days. So then I firmly book the hall and then um, posters will come from the company. So they get distributed, flyers get distributed. The bistro in the village um, sells tickets for us. I do a Facebook page, a uh, public hall Facebook page. I do a e-newsletter on MailChimp and I do um, press releases as well to all the local papers. Open up, you greet the cast when they come in about, make sure they're comfortable. Usually I feed them um, and uh, set up the hall. I've already organised a couple of people to come and help me. So there was Alicia in the kitchen and um, there was Esther on the door. And um, then there's a number of people who will help put away everything away at the end of the night. And then I wait till everything, everybody's gone and then I lock up the hall. And then I go home and put my feet up. <laughs> For me, the joy of meeting other creative people. But I also love to engage with the audience. Well, I get to see lots of things for nothing. <laughs> That's really good. I suppose because it's something I do for the, for the, for the community, um, not just for the hall, but the community and the wider community, because I tend to get quite a lot of audience from out with New Deer. It's, it keeps my brain active, I think. <laughs> Well, I think it does because actually I know a lot of people who come to these shows that I wouldn't otherwise know. Okay. And it's possible that each of them know other people that come to the shows, at least as acquaintances, if not as friends, that they might not necessarily otherwise have a context to meet. One little girl said, um, I like being involved with this because people listen to my ideas. And I thought, right, that's so important. Um, and really key that a child has picked up on the fact that that they could have input. Um, so that, with all its benefits, is good enough, I'd say. I did very much. Yeah, it was amazing. It was just right from the very start. It just caught you, didn't it? And it was just like, just, and you were ticking right in. It was, 
It was so believable. Oh, I loved it. I laughed from beginning to end. I thought, I thought the way he did the opening credits of a film was just amazing. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Most definitely. <laughs> yeah, it was really good. Yeah, it was great fun. Yeah. Yes, it was excellent. Yeah. I loved it. I thought it was very funny. Very, very good actress as well. I think it was just funny right from the very start. And it was just such a laugh. It was just very clever. I think I like the bit of the cat. He's stroking the cat and they're like, wow. It was obviously very well rehearsed in the way the music fitted in. Really did enjoy it. Well, well, the whole thing actually, the way it was scripted, the jokes, the you know, even even bringing the cars out was really fun. It just, it just, the whole thing for a whole hour. I've enjoyed myself. Yeah. I thought it was really clever the way they rhymed, the way they sang, the way they took us around to different places. I thought it was very unusual and just something nice and different. I, I like the promenade style. I've never been to a theatre in that style before and it was good. That level of interaction with the audience was excellent. Really, really enjoyed that. I think it was the story was very good um, and very intriguing and interesting how it all sort of entwined with each other. I enjoyed the various characters. I thought that she got the ages of the characters very accurately. I thought that the performance was also very good. Being able to perform those three ages was, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's a brilliant performance. So you've got something that was both amusing, a bit stimulating, well performed. Uh, there's not much else you could really like about it. I don't think it's brilliant. I suppose the the, the, the skill skill of the act of the actor, you know, playing, you know, keeping all, uh, well, I suppose what is it, four roles distinct and things, and and that you know you felt there were four different people there. It wasn't just one person. Great, I feel really uplifted because it was a thought to come out tonight because the weather's bad and uh, that road over from us can get quite bad and we thought, oh, shall we do it? But oh, really, really uplifted and so much better for it, yeah. I always feel pleased I've come because with such a stormy night, um, it was a bit of an effort tonight. It's not very far to come, but um, you know, I thought, yeah, I'll, I'll go and enjoy it. And I'm really glad I came. Very up, very happy. It's brightened my day up, most certainly has. Even though it's a rotten night out there, it's, it was certainly worth coming out. Oh, I'm, I'm in a really good mood now. I feel like skipping home. <laughs> I think it was a bit near to home in some parts. <laughs> but no, I, would, I thought it was, it was good. It was quite enlightening. I think they bring, they bring theatre to us because normally we have to go like 30 odd miles to Aberdeen um, if we want to see something. But this is just local village hall. Well, this, we're about what, uh, 10 miles away. It's no trouble at all and it's just lovely to have something local. And it's a lovely, here it's a lovely atmosphere. Amazed at the variety um, of, of the different things that they do. I mean, this, is, this was a really completely unusual one. North East Arts Touring is, it, it, you know, it's really pretty amazing. It's something that we would definitely miss. Uh, and, you know, funding's being cut in such a lot of areas. Um, but it's really quite disappointing. It's a bit of uh, leavening in the lump, isn't it? It's uh, it, it's 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 in interest, you know. And it, I mean, it tends to be the people that one knows, but one or two other people as well. It's a, it, it provides yet another neutral space where everybody has the right to come, and there's elements of socialising as well as the theatre itself. So, you know, from, from both a cultural and a social point of view, it's 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 valuable and pleasant. One of the things that these neat shows do is they actually bring something a lot bit different the kind of stuff you get at the Edinburgh Festival you don't you know just we don't get a lot of that just in Aberdeen in general and definitely not in the Ab in Aberdeen Shire. Definitely yes. Yeah yes I think they do yeah I think they're great. I think so yeah I think so because the see sometimes you see the same faces and then other times there'll be different faces coming in. Yeah, it certainly does. It would be nice if we've even got more people. Uh, I'm absolutely certain they do. If you've got an excuse for people to go out and meet, I think it's more valuable now than it's ever been because a lot of people, I mean, they may be commuting to work somewhere, they commute back and they stay within their box. And if there isn't anything to draw them out, um, 
like uh, it used traditionally to be the old pub that you'd go down to. People don't go out and socialise in that way so, more, so much. And this brings people together and they've got something to talk about, which is I, it's a great thing to do.